You can call me Pastor Shaka, if you wish. Pastor Carl, if you wish. Carl, if you wish. I am a husband of one wife. Hallelujah. My beautiful wife is sitting here. Bishop, reverend, honorable. Amen. Amazing woman of God. Also a servant. We have three children. Amen. You, you, you don't see them here, but we do have three children. The oldest one is married, and they have a, a son, which is our grandson. Hallelujah. I'm proud of my children, but I love my grandchild. There's just something happens to you. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for my family. Because our families are, are what keep society together. Our families, amen? It keeps society together because it displays who God is. I am thankful for this honor to speak to you this morning, to bring the truth to you this morning. Don't take it lightly. I struggle greatly preparing this message. But you know, you stand before people, you stand before God, and you're just, you're speaking forth His Word. You're speaking forth life. Amen. And I want to accurately, accurately divide it and to bring it to you this morning. So it's an honor, and I thank Apostle, Pastor Nadia, Pastor JB, and Pastor Jenny for this opportunity wonderful servants who have impacted my life, made a difference in my life, by God, through them. Amen. Any newcomers here this morning, this is your first time that you've come to Cross Point? First time in a long time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do have a, a welcome, welcome card to fill out. And if you would, wouldn't mind doing that so that we can connect with you. Again, it's not to collect your information so that we can go sell it to somebody. It is very confidential and private. And we keep it that way. Welcome for coming to Cross Point this morning. I trust you will be blessed. Jesus will meet you where you're at. As you know that this weekend is also the first anniversary of Cross Point Life Springs in Edmonton. So our pastors are there. Some of our other pastors are there. Some of our ministers are there. And whomever else has gone to be a part of it. Amen? We rejoice in God. You know what? Starting a church is not an easy work. It is a very difficult work. It's, again, I say it's hard work to, to start a church. You not only battle against yourself and your thinking and, and your belief system, you're fighting a, a spiritual battle because you're setting up another kingdom of God, another place of worship, another place of declaration of God's word. So you will be in battle. You will be in a fight. Let us not forget those who are out there. Those who are in Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Edmonton. Those who are in Calgary already. Washington, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, British Columbia. Those are by faith. Amen. Nova Scotia, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a weekend also of remembering. What are we remembering? We are remembering those who lost their lives, gave up their lives, worked on our behalf so that we could have freedom in this country. Some women, men and women come home. Some men and women didn't come home. They laid down their lives for you and I. 
to be in a country that we could have freedom. Let's remember them. And we also have one in our congregation that participated. If we could have Jeff Culp stand. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Let's stand and let's honor the work that he did. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for going. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lest we forget Amen. where our freedom comes from. Elder Sandrine, you were preaching my message this morning. <laughs> you didn't know it. Lest we forget where we come from. Lest we forget what Jesus did. Lest we forget. I think the message I have to share this morning is in time with what men and women did for us. But there is one man that did something for us. Amen. His name is Jesus. Lest we forget where we come from. Lest we forget where we're going. What your purpose in life is. Where you're headed. Um, I just want to inject too with Wednesday service. I believe in this season of all churches in the world. We're in a time where we, we can't not fellowship, we can't not come together, we can't not hear the word. Yes. We can't not. As, as on Wednesday it says, you know not your enemy. If you don't know your enemy, how do you know how to fight against them? Some of the things that even in World War I, World War II, and some of the other battles that went on, if they didn't know their enemy, how were they going to fight their enemy? How were they going to conquer them if they didn't know something about their enemy? Even in the Old Testament, those men and women who sought God to seek after, Lord, what should I do? How should I, should I go out and battle these people? Or should I not? And you know what? God would say, go over to the mulberry bush over here. Go come from this corner. Come down from here and do this. And the battle was won. So we, we have to know our enemy. Wednesday night, we have to know our enemy. It is not flesh and blood. It is spiritual. There's a spiritual war going on over your life, over your family, over this city, over this country. Just listen to the news. Just listen to the, the bylaws and that are being passed. Do you think that it's by chance that marijuana is being legalized in Canada? Where is it coming from? A demonic power Amen. that's over Canada. Yes. Oh, we live in a free country. Oh, we do. But there's some people and there's an enemy that is working through people to pass these bylaws. Come on. We can't be ignorant. It's here. It is here. The enemy is ramping up his battle. He's ramping it up. So we need to know our enemy. And I believe in this season, Bishop Michelle wasn't covered with a covering to, to minister. I'm, I'm pumping up my wife. Because there's an anointing, there's a mantle that's been placed over her. Not just in Calgary, but Central America. So God has given an anointing to deal with certain things in that country. And it's a demonic force that we're fighting against. We're fighting Satan, people. We are fighting Satan. And you say, well, it's not one-on-one -on -one with him, but because the Lord, it's his battle. But we still have to stand. You know, the end time Bible says, 
you know what, this is what's going to happen. And that's true, it's going to happen, but it would be much worse if the church lays back. The church doesn't do anything. The church doesn't come on Friday night and push and push. Do we get tired? Yes. Are we tired? Yes. But we must keep pushing. We have to keep pushing until the breakthrough comes. And if it doesn't happen in our lifetime, depending on when Jesus comes, for our children and our children's children. You know what? When you, you have, your children have children and then you, you start being concerned for them. How is it going to be for them in 20 years? Our daughter set up a time capsule, capsule yesterday. He turned, he's turning one on Tuesday, our grandchild. That, yeah, tomorrow. Sorry. So she had us write down certain things on these pieces of paper for him when he turns 18. So you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, what do I want to say to my grandson? Because there's a chance I might not be here. There's a chance. So what would I say to him that would make a difference for him then? If he doesn't listen to his parents, maybe he'll listen to grandpa. Maybe he'll listen to grandma. What words would I speak to him? It wasn't flowery, but some truth. I didn't preach to him, but I said, I don't want to speak it out because I put it on paper for him. The main scripture I chose for today, that was all free, by the way. I feel serious in my spirit. I feel serious. You know, as, as I'm preparing, this week has been a tough one. You know what? You're preparing and you're seeking your heart and you say, God, is there anything in my heart? You know, that's not right between you and me and between my wife or between my children, between anybody. Kick out, kick out a few demons out of my life so that I can speak the word with a pure heart. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are here today. You are here to minister to us. Holy Spirit, speak. Speak to us. That will challenge us. That will move us in your direction, in your purpose. That we may see, O oh Lord God, what you are doing but we also see what the enemy is doing. But Lord, we seek you to know the battle plan, to know how to pray, how to seek you, how to go out and fight. So I humble myself before you, Lord, to speak your word. Untainted, uncovered, but as what your word says, Lord. In Jesus' name. The verse I chose is John 14, 6, as a heading. Jesus said to him, I am the way. He says, I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way because Jesus has said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. There's no other way, there's no other way. As you can see the picture, it's a beautiful Rolls Royce. beautiful picture of background but you and I are on the road of life we are on the road of life no matter what car we drive we are on the road so we can look at the picture and it can depict a road 
that everything's fine, everything looks beautiful, right? But it can also depict false, because it, it may look good, but it's really not. It's really not. There we see one road, but in life there are two roads that we travel on. There's two roads that you can go down. There are two ways. There's a road to destruction, and there is a road to life. Amen? Two roads. And we are the ones who decide which road we will travel on. We decide. God doesn't decide for us. We decide. Just like I like potatoes and roast beef and some gravy on top. Maybe some peas on the side. Maybe some broccoli. Brussels sprouts. You like Brussels sprouts, right? So you can have it, it all beautiful. Because you decide that's what you want. So we too decide which road we're going to take. Which road we will travel down. We do have ambitions, we have plans, we have hopes, and we have dreams. But there is an enemy that comes to distort that. There's an enemy that comes to frustrate, disillusion, create disappointment. Do you ever find that? Do you, do you see that in your life? A little bit of disappointment? A little delusional, delusionment? Something like that? That's what the word is? We're delusioned sometimes to think that it should look this way, but it doesn't happen that way. We have a picture that we have painted for life. This is how my life is going to go. This is what my life is going to look like. And when it doesn't happen that way, we get disappointed. I get my paycheck, and I look at it, and I get disappointed. How about you? Come on. You never get disappointed? Hey? For sure we do. We're human. We're human. But even in that moment, we have to choose. Is my paycheck my provision only? Or is God my provision? That's it. Hallelujah. We decide. We decide. The tactic of the enemy. If we look at Mark 4.19... In this chapter, he's talking about sowing of the seed. Where is the seed put? Is it on good ground? Is it on stony ground? Is it on thorny ground? But I just chose a portion out of it. It says, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. The cares. See, it says worries, but in King James it says cares. Worries, yeah, worries. I worries, but cares, the cares. Because cares makes it sound like I'm caring for it. Right? I'm looking after it. I'm trying to help it along. I'm trying to manipulate it. I'm trying to make it happen. What is, a, what is a care of life? To you, what is a care of life? Is it your bank account? You know what? It could even be our children. Because we want our children to be successful. We start putting more care on them than, than what we maybe should be. And letting God work in their lives. So we put care on them. We care for our business. Yeah, we need to look after our business, but we have just this overburden of that care. 
Maybe it's just success. I want to be successful. I want to be a successful speaker. I want to be a successful preacher. I want to be able to speak it out. I, so it becomes a care. And it did for me. It did. I become worried until I just finally said, you know what? God, it's you. It's by your spirit. Just speak the word. Let the word do its job. Let the Holy Spirit come. Just many, you know what? It doesn't even have to be things. It can be sickness. It can be a disease. We're caring for it. You run to the hospital. Maybe it's two, three days a week you have to go to the hospital. It becomes a care, a burden on you. Amen? We have to stop and think, what is that care? What is it I'm caring about? What is it I'm care the load that I am carrying, that I'm caring about? What is it? Then he says, again, it's King James, the deceitfulness of riches. I'm kind of picking this verse apart. Dictionary meaning of de deceitfulness is unworthy of trust or belief. And riches, in the Greek, means wealth or money, which it says in this translation, wealth. Oh, we changed it. But wealth. So what does that mean? Money that we cannot trust or believe in. So, in the verse, he's saying that the, the cares of this world, caring about our, our money, caring about work, wealth, how, how am I going to make my mortgage payment? How am I going to pay this? How am I going to travel around the world? How am I going to? So it's, we're, we become focused on just money. Hallelujah. It sounds too quiet in here. Amen? This is to help us to, to take a look at what we're doing. Stop and shake us. Right? Shake us. Get us out of our slumber. Out of where we're at. You know what? You work at a job for how many years? And, and you, you just start slumbering. You're thinking, oh, I, you know what? I can just relax a little bit because I've been working here for five years now. Oh, it's seven years. There's ten years. So I could just relax a little. We do it. Right? Not as the first day or our first year of work. Hey, man, I'm just on it. Wow, what else can I do here? Uh, yes, I, I'll do that. Now it's like, that's not my job. <laughs> hey, I said it two weeks ago. <laughs> I did. But I still did it. I, because I knew my attitude was wrong. My attitude was wrong. Even though they come and they were challenged me to do it, I said, no, nah, it's a whole story. The fact is, I said this to myself and to others, it's not my job. So we, even in church, even in our relationship with God, we, oh, I've been in Christ for how many years now? I'm doing great. I'm doing really good. But you find out that, no, I'm not doing very good. Because when you start reading the word of God, you understand that, no, I'm not doing very well. Actually, I'm a little sick. Actually, maybe I have a demon hanging onto my, my leg. Seriously. You know what? There's demons in this house right now. You think over oh, in church that they don't show up? How do they show up? Sometimes in my attitude. Yeah. Jealousy. Judgment. I start judging something. Why do they dress like that? Why do they behaving like that? Right? So you, you know what? They come with your attitude. So I have to say enough. Carl, smarten up. And you know what? When I, when I start talking about it wasn't my job, it was like I knew in my spirit I'm speaking wrong. I'm talking wrong. Because as a believer, 
it's wrong. My attitude smelt bad. So the, the, the enemy is, he's twirling around here. We need to cut, a, cut him off. Cut him off out of our lives. Say, no, I choose. I choose, I'll do that for you. With a good heart. As if I just started my job and say, yes, yes, I'll do that for you. Get it done. It's over. It's finished. Move on to what's next. And I feel good. Hey, I did that for them. Right? I did it. The other part, it says desires. King James says the lusts of other things. Lusts of other things. What's, it's a desire, right? We all have desires. We desire to be successful. We do. Don't you? We desire to be successful in our families, in our marriages, in our jobs, in our ministry. We desire that. But he's saying it's something that we're lusting after. When you say lust, it doesn't sound very good, does it? There's something bad about it. Just the word itself doesn't sound well. Something that maybe that we shouldn't have. Maybe we're playing with something that we shouldn't be playing with. Something maybe the world has and, oh my goodness, I would like that too. I remember in the days when I used to drink. Thank God he set me free. Hallelujah. You know, and how the enemy comes and he says, oh, it's okay because you're over it. Now you can have a little drink. Of course, I know you guys don't have that, right? You don't struggle with that or the, the enemy doesn't tempt you with that, right? No, he, he does. So if I have no problem with it, then I have no problem with saying, hey, get out. I'm not going to entertain you. I'm going to have anything to do with you. So it's desiring something that may not be good for us. Jesus. So you can put it whatever, whatever you know in your own heart, those things that you desire for. I don't know what they are. I know what mine are. But you know what yours are. So what is it that in that you know it's not right that I need help. I need to be set free from that thing. Amen? And he says the end of it all becoming unfruitful. All those things blah, 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 blah makes us unfruitful. So we have to stop and say, what am I doing that causes me not to go forward? To become unfruitful. It's the work of the enemy. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seems seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death the ways are death amen there are ways which we think might be right we have our, our ideas we have our philosophies we you know we've picked up something from work oh, that sounds great wow that sounds powerful but is it in the word is it in the word? Is it really a truth that God has put out there? So when we think that in ourselves, hey, this is the right way to go, let's check it out. I think along with, we would heard, I don't know if it was three front lines ago that it, God was saying to get in the word. Get in the word. Get in the word. Heard a speaker just lately here, he was saying that if we were to study the word the way we're supposed to study, we would have no time for TV. We'd have no time for these other things. 
We need the word. We have to be in the word. We must be. You know that when they teach or you learn about what is like your money, for example. Pastor Judith knows well. You know, how do you know what fake money is? compared to to the real right so you study the real and then you look at the fake and you you don't see real stuff so how do we know today for example that what I'm sharing with you is from the word how do you know look at the word you check out the word. So today when you go home, check out the word. Check it out. Acts 17 and 11. Let's just have a quick, this is a little bit of a sideline. But it's, it says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Come on. Come on, people. Amen. Amen. We must search the scriptures so we know that they're so. So we know that it's true. Don't just follow what it, somebody says. Hey? Lots of people in the world are listening to somebody speak a word. And what's happening? There's destruction happening. And they don't even know they're going to destruction. They have found the other road. They're on the other road. Because they're listening to false words. False teaching. We too as believers, we must know the word. We must know the word. We heard it spoke to us. Read the Word. Get in the Word. You know what? We think, oh, that's just somebody telling us. No! That's the Spirit of God. It's a good thing to be in the Word. No? Come on, you, you haven't convinced me. Right? We have to be in the Word. We've got to be. Carl, you have to be in the Word. In Ezekiel 18.25. Glory be to God. We're setting up a platform. It, it looks negative, but you know what? That negative stuff is out there. That, there's a force working in the world. And his name is Satan. He's working hard. Working hard to even work in the church. Even harder. Amen. Ezekiel 18.25. God is good. Hallelujah. Yet you say the way of the Lord is not equal. One translation says not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal or my way fair? Are not your ways unequal? Huh? Aren't your ways unfair? We say God's unfair all the time. God, you're not fair. God, you're not fair. God, you're not fair. And you know, you hear people in the world say that. Well, that's not fair. Why would God keep us from that? Why, why does God create calamity over here? Why is there a, a hurricane over here? Why is there? Why is God doing that? Who says it's God? Right? There's a lot of blame put on God. And that, that's just the voice of the enemy speaking. Because he wants to discredit God. Amen? Hallelujah. And if we look down further in verse 30 of the same chapter, he says, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions so that iniquity will not be your ruin. Amen? 
That's what God says today. Turn from your ways. Turn from your wicked ways. He says, repent. Come back to me so that you don't fall in ruin. Amen? The cares of the world, it says, will be unfruitful. We will come to ruin, people. We will if we don't seek our God. Because the word says that in the last days, there will be a great falling away. And it's not talking about the world falling away. It's talking about the church. The church. So we must prepare our hearts. Prepare our hearts. Say, God, you know, help me in those areas of my life that are unfruitful. Help me in those areas of my life that are not producing life, that are producing light. Help me. Help me, Holy Spirit. Guide me into your truth. Show me in your word your truth that's going to bring life to me. Because there is life in the words. Behind every work of man, there is a possibility of the work of Satan. The work of the flesh. We find ourselves on the road of destruction led by Satan. Or are we on the road led by Jesus Christ that leads to life? We are on either road. There is no middle road, people. There's no middle road. The Bible teaches us that there's a way of destruction and there is a way of life. And he says, the way to destruction, the road is wide. Hey, man, come on in. Look at this. Look at that. You can be part of this and you're going to make it. You'll be fine. No, you won't. You won't be fine. We will not be fine. Because he says that if we have those cares, we have those things that are nagging us all the time, drawing us away from God, it's going to bring us to ruin. It will bring us, it, we will end up switching roads, not just the lane. We're going to switch roads. Satan is a task master. To put every and any form of pressure, disillusionment, disappointment, frustration, and hopelessness upon us. He is doing his best, doing his best job to cast us down. When things don't work the way you expect them to, the way they should look, I tell you, disappointment comes. Or you, you start listening to the wrong things. Maybe you're watching, you have this special favorite TV program you like. But you find your life is not being fruitful. Maybe you don't even want to come to church. Maybe it's on Wednesday night and, uh, oh, it's okay if I miss tonight because my program's on. Right? No, it's true. But let me t tell you that those people who are on that program are godless people. Serving Satan, Scientology, Satan's church. They are. You read up on these people. Even if we've been listening to some documentaries and some different things that, you know what, even um, Michael Jackson. He was a part of the Satan's church. Some of the moves that he does are satanic. Did you know that? So anytime that we like his music or we entertain that, we are opening a door. We are opening a door for us. And even through the television. You know what? He's a spirit. He's not a, a human body. So the human body can't come out and grab you like that, some of that advertisement, right? The one, I can't remember what it was. But he would come out and he would grab. But the spirit can. They're not restricted by walls. So they can come out and they can attach to us. I'm not lying.
you know what? I was meditating and I've, I've had an issue throughout my life and I think back and I, I realize it was nothing of my doing because I was a kid. So how did that happen? How did it happen? Somebody opened the door for me. Somebody. Somebody opened that door. It wasn't my doing. But I've been learning that, you know what? You can become controlled by a spirit when you're in the womb. You know what? You say, oh, no, that's not possible. Well, you look at John the Baptist. John the Baptist was filled with the spirit in the womb. Right? So who is saying that the enemy can't come and attach himself to your child in your womb? And, you know, it's, it's not like they were involved in the occult, which that can happen, right, through all that garbage. But even if the mother experiences fear at a specific time in her life when she's carrying that baby, it, the spirit of fear may not attach to her, but it can attach to her child. Spirit of rejection can come from the womb. Because the mother or the father is speaking, I don't want this baby. And it's in a, it can even be an emotion. Because the emotion, that baby is attached to that mother. So they experience the emotion. The mother may be able to deal with it, but the child can't. So the enemy can attach. So you know, if there's things that you're dealing with in your life, you know what? God can help you with them. Amen? Amen? So Satan is a taskmaster. He will do whatever possible to mess up your life. Whatever possible. Now there is a solution. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53.3. There is a solution. Hallelujah. God always has a solution. He always has a solution for you. He has a solution for our lives. Amen? He does have a solution. He said, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Let's go to verse 4 and 5 as well. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we didn't, did esteem him stricken. Oh, just a minute. Let's go back. Just that next verse. Smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has set me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified that he might be glorified. Jesus has done it for us. He has made provision for us. For us. Jesus has gone to the cross for us to take it upon himself, your brokenness, your grief, 
your rejection, your sorrows, your disillusionment, disappointments, frustrations, discouragement, and every filthy demon. I, in the name of Jesus, we declare in the name of Jesus, we declare freedom in the house today. Freedom in the name of Jesus. We declare the power of the Spirit of God to move in your life in Jesus' name. Setting you free. Hallelujah. Because Jesus has done it. We declare Jesus has done it. Jesus has done it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus was bruised. Jesus was whipped. He was despised. He was ridiculed. He was falsely accused. And a crown of thorns put on his head as a mocking that he was a king. Right? Jesus was. Who did this to Jesus? Well, if we look in Isaiah 53, 6, for the last part, we don't have to put these up. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Verse 10 says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for his soul, sorry, make his soul an offering for sin. God had a plan, right? God didn't put it on him in the sense of, you know what? I'm angry with you. I'm laying this on you. You're going to die. You're going you're gonna to suffer this. No, he said, this is my plan. This is what's going to happen, okay? So at a specific time in, in history, he said, this is my perfect time. The time is in the Roman rulership. And, and by chance in those, that time, what did they do? They crucified people on a cross. Right? Any other society, did they put them on crosses? I don't believe so. But the Romans did. But the word had to be fulfilled. It says that Christ will be lifted up. Right? He will be lifted up. He was lifted up on the cross. But it says here, because he was an offering for sin. Right? Offering for sin. And there had to be a perfect lamb to die for all generations. From that time till the, the end. A perfect lamb. And that perfect lamb was Jesus. It was our sin that put Jesus on the cross. But it was his willingness to do it for us. His willingness. Amen? If we look at, or when we look at, New Testament scripture... Sorry, it's dry up here. And when your lips start wanting to stick together, you know it's dry. <laughs> Hallelujah. We look at New Testament scripture. We see that it was the Jewish leaders that sought to kill Jesus. Right? Because Jesus was their enemy. Jesus challenged them. Rigorously, rigorously. He challenged them. So it was the Jewish leaders that sought to kill Jesus. But we also see in that is that the government was involved too. Because it was Roman soldiers that took him out to the place to put him on the cross. So it was that church at that time working in conjunction with the government to crucify Jesus, right? And I just saw that this morning as I'm typing out my notes. 
Because as I'd heard just recently too that Stalin, in the time when he'd come and he was killing the Jewish people, the church authenticated it. The church people, the church. We are not that church. We will not authenticate anything that is going to kill people, destroy people in the name of Jesus. Right? We will not. We will stand for Jesus Christ. We will declare life in the name of Jesus. So the government and religious leaders, those who oppress the people, the religious leaders, leaders oppress the people, as did the, the Roman government. It was the Jewish leaders who declared, crucify him. Crucify him. Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas in the place of Jesus. You know what? The Bible talks about Antichrist working. Well, the Antichrist was working as soon as Jesus came on the scene. Because until that time, that, that spirit couldn't work. Because how can you have an Antichrist without a Christ? So at the very beginning of time, it was Antichrist, Satan himself, working to destroy Jesus. A force working in the people that they hail Jesus coming in. They lay down their coats. They lay down the leaves. Hail King Jesus. A week later, they're crying, crucify him. How is that possible? How fickle are these people, right? It was a spirit driving them. It wasn't God that lifted him on the cross. It was God's plan. It was God's plan that he would die for all mankind. But the place and the way that he was brutally beaten was not God's plan. He did sacrifice his body, but it was the enemy trying to kill him. Trying to annihilate. Say, hey, you know what? I've got you now. I have you now. This is it. I'm going to be ruler. The Antichrist is working today to disclaim Jesus Christ, to disclaim the cross. Salvador Sandrine said, where do we come from? We need to set our focus back to the cross because that is where our victory is. Amen. Our victory is through the cross. Amen? Amen? If you lose sight of the cross, then the enemy is winning. Say, oh, well, you know what? That's okay. You know what, Jesus, you know what? He didn't really die. No, Jesus went to the cross. He laid down his life. Satan didn't kill him. He says, I give up my spirit. I lay down my life. I lay down my life. Jesus laid down his life for us. But it was the enemy that put the abuse on him, the whipping the scourging, the laughter. Is the enemy laughing at you today? Is people laughing at you? Are people reviling you, despising you because you're a Christian? Because you believe a certain way? Because you believe in Jesus Christ, crucified, rose again? You believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ? You believe that he's coming again? You believe that he rose from the dead? That he is the son of God. I declare, Jesus is the son of God. Amen. He is the son of God. Amen. Jesus is the son of God. Amen? Amen? He is. So he says today, if you are in this place, you have whatever it is, a disease, a sickness, maybe it's even a demon. Who cares? Let's find freedom. In Jesus' name. Hey? Let's find freedom. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
So Jesus went to the cross. He took all that stuff for you and I. Every last bit of what you are going through. He has taken it to the cross. Some way or shape or form in what Jesus bore on his body for us. He has done it for you. It is done for you. Whether it's rejection, low self-esteem, lack, you need healing, you need deliverance, it's all there. It is finished. Jesus made a laughing stock. Jesus triumphed at the cross because the enemy wants to tell you that no, that's why he wants to cover the cross up. He doesn't want you to talk about the cross. Because there was victory. It was finished. There was a triumph. There was a triumph in Jesus' name, right? Jesus triumphed. And you know, Jesus led in triumph. Every demonic power falling behind him because he defeated them. In the name of Jesus. That's what the kings used to do in the old days. When they triumphed, they had all their prisoners following behind them. Jesus had every prisoner, demonic, chained up in the name of Jesus. So that we could be free. Because Jesus triumphed. Jesus triumphed for you and me. So today you can walk in triumph because of what Jesus did. Every demonic power that's trailing after you, I cut off in the name of Jesus. Stop in the name of Jesus. Every hindering spirit, stop in the name of Jesus. Because you are defeated today. You are a defeated foe in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus did it for you. He did it for me. That you could have freedom. Hallelujah. So we, we make a choice. And it doesn't matter what car you're driving. It's a very nice looking car. It's a Rolls Royce. Not sure if there's other models to it because I don't follow them. I, I drive Chevys, you know. Hallelujah. Um, you choose which road you ride on. You choose your destiny. You do have a choice. You have a choice to make. To stop watching that TV program. That is not good for you. You need to stop. Maybe it's pornography. You need to stop. Maybe it's having this occasional drink. You need to stop. You know what? Yeah, Jesus did turn the water into wine. He did. Maybe he even had a drink of it. And, he, and according to the guy said, it was the best wine ever. Come on now, eh? Hey! No, seriously. If I'm going to drink, how am I going to help somebody that has the problem of drinking? How am I going to help them? When I say, oh, I can just have my occasional drink. But you have to stop in the name of Jesus. Right? How do we help? Maybe, maybe, because now we have a law that we can smoke pot. Hey, it's now legal. It's okay. It's okay to have a little mwah. <laughs> Let me tell you, no, it's not. The government doesn't tell me what's right and wrong. Just because the government say it's okay doesn't say that God says it's okay. Same-sex marriage. Oh, man, now. Oh, now it's fine. Yeah, the government says it may be fine. But Jesus says it's not okay. Right? Maybe we have trouble with worldly music. I heard a testimony. A 
that we refuse to listen to the world of music that our lives start turning for the best. Because you know, to be honest with you, there was one catchy song, because they have the radio playing all the time at work. I like to shoot the thing. <laughs> uh, I can't remember what it was, but it was, you know, it was catchy. Until I started listening to the words. And the words were not very good. So I refused to jive to the, the tune. I did. I refused. Because before it was like, yeah, 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 this is great. It's good music. Because I do. I love to dance, as you can tell. But I, I had to stop it. Because I, that, those, the words that's coming from it are death. Right? And you think, oh, well, country music's fine. No, it's not. What, what does it talk about all the time? It's always love. Oh, I love you. Oh, no, I don't love you anymore. I love the other person. And I'm cheating. Right? No, tell me if it's not true. That's true. Country music is, is all about that. You listen to it. Not too long. But just to... Just to hear what it's saying. Because it's not there to bring you life. Again, those people that are singing it, how do you know they haven't sold their soul to the devil? Like a lot of famous rock stars. And they've even told us on documentaries. You listen to some documentaries. Go to YouTube. And those singers sold their soul to Satan. I tell you, do we want to be fruitful or do we not? Serious. I mean, for my own life, do I want to be fruitful or do I not? Yeah. Honest to goodness. I just have to go. Shake my head. Carl, what, what, what are you doing? So, Jesus come and he died for that stuff. He died so that we could be free. Because I tell you, smoking dope isn't going to give you freedom. But I say, you know what? If it helps people with their aches and pains, then as a pharmaceutical, just put it into the drug like they normally do. You can rub it on your joints. Don't smoke it or sniff it. But otherwise, it's just an opportunity just to mess up your life. I heard story. I mean, you hear stuff when you're at work. <laughs> stuff you don't want to hear. But it, people are saying, oh, well, you know what? Maybe I'll try it now. Whoa. Seriously. Maybe I'll try it now. When they never touched it before. Which kind of just brings a little swing. Because we're talking about the lusts or the desires that we have in our heart. If there's any little bit of peace in there, the enemy's dangling that, that weed in front of you, saying, it's okay. It'll help me in my health. No, Jesus came to die for you so that you could have health. Yes, I know that he has given us doctors and all that, but you know what? We don't have to go to that length to find help. Jesus is here today to heal your body because he went to the cross so that you could be healed. Amen? Amen? So just that little, just, you know what, talking about it. He says, maybe I'll try it now. Maybe I'll try it. Maybe that's in your heart. Maybe I'll try this. Maybe I'll try it. That's not a good thing. That's not just dope. It's other things. You know what, when I was, I turned 16. Because I had given my life to Christ when I was 12. This is a deciding. I turned 16. I got my driver's license because you could in Saskatchewan a few years ago. I decided I'm going to try to drink. I, I did. I decided. That was a, a fateful mistake. No, seriously. 
I wasted my life, I wasted my money, because I was, I, I wasn't a one or two drinker, one or two bottle drinker. I went to the maximum. So I spent, wasted lots of money, lots. I tried telling my kids, don't do this. <laughs> don't waste your money. But, because you know what? You, when you say things that you know you've been there, you've been on that road, stop. Stop it. So if you have a decision in your heart today, just that little lingering thing, lingering thing, that you have a little bit of an inkling or a little bit of a desire to lean that direction. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it off. Because it will lead you to destruction. It will lead you to unfruitfulness. It will. It will. Do you want to see your life change? Cut out some things. Cut off some things. Get rid of some things. Got some things in your house that, you know what, are maybe not pleasing. There was a gentleman that we're watching. His name's Derek Prince, by the way. He'd gotten saved. He had, was walking with God. His life was, was doing well. But he had on his wall these two big dragons. Beautiful things, he said. And you know what? That's the, that's the thing. We like beauty. We do. We like good things. We love sparkle. We love shine. But he, he decided in his heart, you know what? If by chance there's anything with it, I'm going to get rid of them. And he did. And he said his income doubled after he'd done that. So maybe there's something in your house too. We're, we're talking about cleansing. Cleansing our spirit because his word says, you do the cleansing. Cleanse your, your flesh, cleanse your spirit. And if there's anything that's around us that we know is harming us or doing us harm, that the enemy has got himself detached to, let's get rid of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. We think, you know what, Apostle always says, you think, oh, the demons are just in Africa. That's not true. Demons here wear suits. You know, they do. There is demonic power operating in Canada. There is demonic power operating in Calgary. And you know, even in some of our own lives, the demonic power is operating. Not that we're demon possessed, but we're being oppressed. That's true. It is true. But today, Jesus said, I have come that we may be set free. He says in John 10, 10, he says, the thief does not come except to just steal, to kill, and destroy. Let's look at that again. The thief, who's the thief? It's Satan, right? He says, Satan does not come except to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He doesn't give a rip about you. Not one iota. He's about you worshiping him. But that's what he's come to do. He's come to steal from you. He's come to kill you. Come to destroy you. And he will do it in ways that seem innocent. Which is the truth. It looks innocent. A little dope is innocent. Until it messes up your life. Until you start doing cocaine. Which is laced with fentanyl maybe. Our son's friend, brother, passed away two weeks ago from an overdose. Because there was fentanyl in the drug. Did it start out with cocaine? No. I don't know why I'm picking on drugs, but just to emphasize it. Because there's, it was so close. It was close. And when you see that person in the casket, 
It was an open casket. And all you can think is the enemy stole his life. That's the truth. The enemy robbed him. For us who are alive today, we can have life. Because in the second part of that verse, it says, Jesus is saying, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. More abundantly. You can have a more abundant life. So let's cleanse. Let's cleanse this temple. Amen. Cleanse it from top to bottom. He says in Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living. The word of God is living. For those who are out in their house right now, in their room. Maybe you're even thinking about smoking drugs. Maybe you're high on drugs right now. Maybe you're drunk. But in the name of Jesus today, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. For the word of God is living. It is powerful. And it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing. It separates. It divides. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's why we need to read the Word. That's why we need to be in the Word, studying the Word, able to divide it, able to add it, able to move it here, move it there, speak this Word. Add on to it with this word. This word here kept me. This word here stopped me. Amen? The word of God comes to you. You're going to do something. You may not see the darkness. You may not see what's going to happen. But the word of God comes. That verse comes to you. If you don't know what that verse is, how is it going to stop you? It'll stop you from doing you see your heart and say, oh my goodness, I almost went that direction. I almost did that. What destruction would have it brought to me? The Word of God is living. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Set your eyes on the cross. Set your heart on the cross. Provision has been made at the cross for you and I. There's no other provision. Let's rest in the cross. Let's find peace in the cross. Let's find life in the cross. The way is in the cross. The finished work of the cross. Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. We find hope in the cross. We find deliverance in the cross. We find provision in the cross. As we've heard today, in remembrance. As we remember on a physical plane, we also remember on a spiritual plane of what Jesus did for us. We cannot lose sight of the cross because in the cross there's every provision. Every provision. If Jesus said it's finished, it's finished. If Jesus said every demonic power is trailing behind him in triumph, Jesus triumphing over them, then he has triumphed over everyone. Every single one of them. Doesn't matter what it is. Jesus has conquered. Amen. Jesus has triumphed. Amen. By way of the cross. He said, if I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. In him you will find that hope. And you will find him, you will, that rest that you're looking for. That peace. That, from that rejection that you feel. Low self-esteem. Come on. Set your eyes on the cross. I don't know where you are today. Where you're at. Where you are with Jesus. In your heart. But Jesus does. 
He knows your every struggle. He does. He knows everything about you. Don't, don't think that you're hiding something from him. You can't. He knows everything. You're bare, you're plain, you're naked before him. See, Jesus, I come into my heart. Even into that room I have reserved down in the corner, the, the door is locked. It's barred. It's, it's just, man, I can't. Nobody can go in there. But today, say, Jesus, I invite you. Come to that room. Come and fix that room for me. Come and heal. Come and deliver. You know where the areas of your life you need to crucify today. You know. Give it to Jesus today. Amen? Give it to Jesus. He is the only answer. There is no other way. As he, as he says in his word, I am the way. So Buddha is not the way. Muhammad is not the way. Harry Krishna is not the way. Nada. Muda. In the name of Jesus. Ramasruku tayamba. Robo shikalayande. Masati ababu shikalamaniande. We declare that the cross is a finished work. Finished work today in the name of Jesus. In our hearts, we receive the cross. We receive what you did for us, Jesus, so that we may have life and that we have it more abundantly, Lord. And today we stand in Jesus' name, rebuking every demonic power, standing and resisting in the name of Jesus because we have submitted ourselves to God. In the name of Jesus, the enemy, you flee in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You make a choice today. Anybody here that has not accepted Christ into your heart, I ask you to come. Come to the front. You know what? We're not here to point fingers, make faces at you. We receive you as Jesus receives you. Come if you have not accepted Jesus into your heart. This morning, if you are struggling with something, I want you to come so the pastors the elders can pray with you. Let's not be shy. Amen? Amen. Let's not be shy. Because the only way to freedom is, is to kick that devil out. Kick him out. But it's up to you. It's really up to you. I can tell you what to do. Give you a direction as God, through God's word. Any one of us. But it's really up to you. What you do with the word. What you do with the conviction in your heart. Because God is, I believe God is convicting hearts here today. I believe it. I believe it. God is convicting hearts. Don't resist. Don't resist your freedom today. Don't resist God today. Don't resist Him. Say, I choose life. I choose life today. I choose freedom today. I choose to live for Jesus. As the apostle said, God is looking for our heart. First our heart. He's looking for our heart. Does He have your whole heart today? Does He have your whole heart? Please come. If you desire prayer, please come. Let's, let's stand before God, for He is here. God is here today to do as what His Word says He will do. And what He has said He has done, it is a finished work. So we must just walk in and enter and take a hold. Receive what the cross has done. We rest in the cross. Pastors, ministers, come and minister. Let's just keep the music at a low level this morning. Be free. And you know, pastors and ministers, if they tell you something, don't go telling other people, okay? Because they're telling you in confidence today. Unless they've, they've killed somebody. 
then maybe we need to talk. But you know what? They're, they're telling you in confidence, okay? I want people to feel free today to be able to tell you what's going on in their life so that today we, we are speaking specifically to what it is. So when they tell you, don't go telling your next minister or your pastor. Nada. You know when I go out and minister to somebody, I don't come home and tell Bishop Michelle. I may say they're struggling, let's pray for them. But I don't tell her all the stuff that they told me. They told me in confidence. Right? So this morning, come and let's minister. Come pastors, speak. Talk to these people. Pray for them. Don't be shy to say what's going on in your heart. You know, as I said, if there's a little inkling of that lust or that desire in your heart, you know what, this morning, let's kick it out. Let's deal with it. If that desire will lead you astray, Come on, let's, let's be free this morning, people. Let's be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes the word of God says, the laying on of hands. You know what the ministry of Jesus was? Was to heal the sick and to cast out demons. Let's get rid of those things that are hanging around us. Let's cleanse ourselves this morning. Let's shake it off in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus. I declare freedom in the house this morning in the name of Jesus. I declare by your spirit, O Lord, it's not by might nor by power, but it is by your spirit, O Father God. It is by your spirit, O Lord. Jesus, you went to the cross. You have set your people free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be shy. Don't fear. Don't fear. Jesus is here by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. 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 Mandorabu shekarababayande balarabu shekea. Ikamamarandi shokorababayate. Don't leave this place today without meeting with Jesus. There is contact. There is contact through laying on of hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who's praying this morning. It is Jesus who is here to minister. It is Jesus here today to minister in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, shanamamayanda bobo shekarababayate. Masako robo shekande balalabutulia. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The finished work of the cross. The finished work of the cross. It is finished. Declare in your life today, it is finished. It is finished. Hallelujah. It is finished. This harassment, it is finished. Do you feel like somebody's following you? It's a demonic force. If you feel it, you sense it. Cut it off this morning. Cut it off in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know what it is. As the word says, what is it that so easily besets you? What is it that trips you up? What is it? What is it? You keep going around that same mountain. You know what it is that you face. And when that comes at you, it makes you go back around the mountain again. This morning, we declare that that is finished.